Hello and welcome to the session on set theory. We'll talk about some basic terms, basic operations and how to calculate number of elements. Number of elements kind of questions are probably the most frequently asked questions in most of the exams. So let us begin. Now for set theory, a particular set is defined as a set which follows a certain properties or a given collection of elements. The cardinal number of a set is the number of elements in that set. So for this one, which has a, b, c, 2, 4, the cardinal number is 5. A subset is if every element of set b is present in set a, then b is a subset of set a. So how many subsets are going to be possible? Well, if a set has n elements, the number of subsets is going to be 2 to the power of n. Why? Let's say that set b was a subset of set A. Now with the element A, there are two choices whether it will be there or not there. So let's say A is there. With B also there are two choices. Let's say B is not there. With C also there are two choices. Let's say C is there. So for each every individual element, there are two choices for four, two choices for two. For each of them, there are two choices. Total number of choices. 2 for A into 2 for B into 2 for C into 2 for 2 into 2 for 4 which is 2 to the power of 5 or 2 to the power of n. In this case, it will be 32. A proper subset is when B is a subset but there is at least one element in A which is left out, which is not a part of set B. So how many proper subsets are going to be there? Well, if the number of subsets is 2 to the power n, the number of proper subsets will be 2 to the power of n minus 1. Why so? Well, only the equal set will be left out. What is an equal set? If two sets have the same elements. So if now a, c and 4, that is a proper subset. If I have a, b, c and 4, that is also a proper subset. But if I have a, b, c, 2, 4, then it is not a proper subset. It is an equal set. And that needs to be left out if you just want the proper subsets. Empty set would be represented by something like this or with the icon of 5. An empty set means that there are no elements in that particular set. As you might have realized, an empty set is a subset of all sets. Equal sets, as I already said, if the elements are the same. Equivalent sets are those in which the number of elements are same. So let's say if I had 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Set A had 5 elements. Set B also had 5 elements. So they are equivalent sets. They are not equal sets. Both of them have the same number of elements. Moving on to some of the basic operations. Let's say I am given a universal set as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. A particular set A as 1, 2, 3, 4 and B as 3, 4, 5, 6. Union. Union essentially means any element which appears either in A or in B. So any element which is there in A is acceptable or it is in B is acceptable. Obviously, if it is in both, much better. So A union B will be 1, 2, 3, 4. Also 5, 6 are there from B. So union will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. The intersection of the elements is which are there in A as well as in B. So 3 and 4 are in A and 3 and 4 are in B. So intersection of A and B will be 3 and 4. Complement. All the elements which are not there in A. So A has 1, 2, 3, 4. What is not there in A? 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Very similarly, B complement. 3, 4, 5, 6 should not be there. Which means 1 and 2 are there. And 7, 8, 9 are there. That makes the set of B complement. There is another concept which is the difference. Which is represented by A minus B. Or A slash B. That is the elements which are there in A. But not in B. So which one will these be? 1 is there in A, not in B. 2 is there in A, but not in B. So A minus B or A slash B or A difference of B will be 1 and 2, which essentially is represented by A intersection of B complement. Check it. This is A. This is B complement. What is the intersection? 1 and 2, which was my answer. Very similarly, let's try B minus A. Now you can see that B minus A, 3 and 4 are there in A, so they will not be considered. Only 5 and 6 will be considered. Once again, you could have figured this out with B intersection A complement. What is common to A complement and B? Only 5 and 6 are common. 
So that is my answer. Please note if you have the difference or the minus sign or the slash sign that can always be replaced by intersection with the complement of the second value. Let us look at De Morgan laws. Very simple ideas. All it says is A union B if there is a complement to it. When you distribute the complement, A will become A complement, B will become B complement, union will become intersection. Also, A intersection B, the entire thing complement, A will become A complement, B will become B complement and intersection will become union. Let us try and verify these values. A union B was 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. What will be the complement of this? It would be 7, 8, 9. Now let us see if we get that from the other part. A complement is 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. B complement is 1, 2, 7, 8, 9. What is common to both of them? What is the intersection part? That is 7, 8, 9. So as you can see here, we are getting the same answer. For the other one, A intersection B, the entire thing complement. What is A intersection B? 3, 4. What will be the complement? If from this complete set, you remove 3, 4. So you'll be left with 1, 2, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. That will be A intersection B, the entire thing complement. The other way around, A complement, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Union, B complement, 1, 2, 7, 8, 9. What will you get? You'll get 1, 2 and then you will get 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. As shown here, which is the same set of values and which kind of validates the De Morgan's laws. Now, let us look at the number of elements concepts. Now, if I have just two sets A and B, the number of elements in A union B is number of elements in A plus the number of elements in B minus the number of elements in A intersection B. It is very important to understand that why have I subtracted this A intersection B part? Well, when I am counting the elements of A, the A intersection B part gets counted. When I am counting the elements of B, again the A intersection B parts get counted. But how many times do I actually need to count it? I need to count it only once. It has been counted twice and that is the reason I need to remove it. Once again, A the entire part, B the entire part, A intersection B got counted twice when we were counting A and when we were counting B, we need to count it only once and that is the reason we remove A intersection B once in the formula for A union B. If you have three sets, well, what I've done is I've represented various parts with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. Now, just to understand this better, which ones are only A? That is 1. Only B is this 3 part. Only C is this 7 part. What does this second represent? Second represents it is there in set A and in set B, but not in set C. What does 4 represent? They are in A and in set C, but not in set B. What does 6 represent? They are in set B, in set C, but not in set A. And what does 5 represent? 5 represents that it is there in all three of them, A, B, as well as in C. A essentially represents the outside part. Now, when you are considering A union B union C, or even before that, can you tell me what will be A intersection C? It will not be 4. It will be 4 plus 5. What will be A intersection B? It will be 2 plus 5. What will be B intersection C? It will be 6 plus 5. Now, when you do A union B union C, all you got to do is 1, 2, 3 plus 4, 5, 6 plus 7. But if you want to look at the formula, it is number of elements in A plus B plus C minus the ones in A intersection B, A intersection C, B intersection C plus the ones in A intersection B intersection C. Why so? Well, because the ones which are there in A intersection B, they got counted when you were counting A, they got counted when you were counting, counting B, they were counted twice, so you need to remove them once. Very similar logic as above. Same thing for A intersection C, they got counted when you were counting A, they got counted when you were counting C, you need to count them only once. So you remove them. Very similarly for B intersection C also. But then why have I added this part? The last part? Well, think of this portion 5 or the intersection of A, B and C. 5 part or A intersection B intersection C got counted when you were counting A. It got counted when you were counting B. It got counted when you were counting C. But, a very important but, 
it got removed when you removed a intersection b it got removed when you removed a intersection c this part and it got removed when you removed b intersection c so it got counted thrice it got removed thrice which is unfair you need to count it exactly once so what do you do got counted thrice here got removed thrice here to count it once we are adding it in the end just to take care because it got added thrice and it got removed thrice which gives us the formula for a union b union c another way of looking at these problems is that the number of elements in a plus b plus c if you just add the three values the ones which are there they'll get counted only once the ones which are there exactly twice that is 2 4 and 6 they will get counted twice and the fifth part the intersection part the thrice part that will get counted three times the a union b union c well in that you need to consider just only once only twice and only thrice now you can use either the intersect uh, the union int formula or you can use these two ideas to solve problems let us look at an example in which we solve it using both of them so let's say that of the members of three athletic teams in a certain school 21 are in basketball 26 in hockey and 29 in the football team 14 play hockey and basketball there are a total of 50 athletes and 10% of them are in all teams now how many athletes are there in more than one team i don't think this information is required let me just remove it so how many athletes are there in more than one team if i apply the union formula from here what do i get a union b union c there are a total of 50 athletes so that is 50 is equal to a plus b plus c which is 21 plus yeah so you can see here 21 plus 26 plus 29 minus the three intersection parts football and basket uh, football and basketball basketball and hockey and hockey and football plus 5 why the last plus 5 10% of them so 10% of 50 are in all teams so now what do i get i get the intersection parts as 50 and this is 76 if you add up and 5 i get this as 31 so f intersection b b intersection h and h intersection f that comes out as 31 but is that the number of athletes in more than one team no this portion has people who are playing it thrice counted thrice it got counted the intersection part got counted here it got counted here and it got counted here how many times should it be counted it should be counted only once so what do i do so for at least two part what i do is it should be counted only once it has been counted twice to counter that i remove it twice that is why 31 minus twice of a intersection b intersection c i am removing it twice so i get the answer as 21 if my question asked how many are there in exactly two then i would have removed it thrice and then my answer would have been 31 minus 15 or 16 so to continue now let us solve it by the other method which is discussed here number of elements in a b and c that is 76 is only once plus twice of only twice plus three times of only thrice only thrice i know is 5 i know the total is 76 that's all the information that i have by the second equation 50 is the ones which are counted once the ones which are counted twice and the ones which are there in all three of them or 5 if you subtract this what do you get 76 minus 50 is 26 only one part gets cancelled twice of only twice minus only twice gives you this once and 15 minus 5 gives it to 10 so the only twice part the ones who play exactly two games are 16 we have to find out more than one so in the 16 we also need to include those who play all three which gives me 16 plus 5 or 21 as you can see you have got the same answer from both the methods well you are going to get the same answer because it is the correct answer the idea is you should be comfortable with both the formulas and both the methods i hope that this session was helpful in clearing some of your set theory basics 
Please provide feedback via Twitter at my Twitter handle, which is at the rate Ravi Handa. You can also email me on my mail ID, which is ravihanda at gmail.com. Thank you.